G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, over the years uh, doing these videos, I've shown you one of the most useful little gadgets I think you, you can have in the workshop, and that's my little pencil air dye grinder kit. Now, these are not expensive, they're very cheap. We need is compressed air uh, supply, and you can grind and cut and drill and do all sorts of things with these. These are really, really good. For the money, they're fantastic. And they last. I mean, this has done a huge amount of work and it's still as good as the day I got it. You know, it never looks like wearing out. They're not perfect, but they're certainly a lot better than nothing if you're working on uh, hard stuff, particularly. Uh, you know, and I've recently done some videos showing you how you can, you know, reface uh, dead centres with them. I mean, you can uh, open out really hard um, metal like... Um, you know, uh, rollers and stuff like that, bearing centres, all sorts. Uh, it's it's a fantastic tool. Now, I recently had a uh, an inquiry from in the comments from Dave Anderson, and he said, "Oh, can you give us the dimensions of the uh, of the little mount that you use when you use it uh, as a tool post grinder? Because I mean, these are designed for hand holding, but you can make up a little mount like this." which goes in your tool post, and you can uh, then use it as a, as a little grinder. And yeah, you know, they work quite well. I mean, they'll do the job quite nicely. So I hadn't thought about this before. I mean, I did show the mount in other videos, and you know, I've done a lot of videos featuring this little unit. But so for this one, I'll just give you a quick overview on what the dimensions are on this particular mount, and basically how you go about making one. They're very, very easy to make. Now you've got to bear in mind though that all lathes are different sizes and the mount that uh, I've made up for my lathe won't be exactly the right dimension probably for some other little lathes, you know, really small ones particularly, the centre line will be different. So you have to make it to the specification, the dimension of your lathe. But I'll show you how you do that. So for now, I'll get a piece of paper and I'll map out the the uh, the shape of this thing and I'll just go through the dimensions, the measurements on it for you. Okay, so here's the uh, the gadget, the mount. Here's a rough schematic of it showing the measurements of this particular one. Now you notice that I've made it offset. I've got a thin section here. When I mean, you're pulling it together with this little bolt here which is an, a 6 mil bolt that I've used. The thickness of this thing is 8 mil, alright, so I've used 8 mil plate but you could use 10 if you want to but I wouldn't go any more than that because it's not necessary. I mean remember the shaft on this little uh, grinder is only 3 mil and it's only meant to be you know, finger pressure so you don't need some humongous great big thing that would hold up the, you know, the Bismarck uh, you just want something that will keep it, uh, you know, rigid enough to do the job, and this is plenty good enough. Okay, so as I said, I've made the hole offset. You could easily extend down the bottom here and make it even more rigid if you wanted to have that bottom section stronger, but this is plenty good enough. Um, having a thin section lets it compress down easily without a lot of pressure, you know, otherwise you'd make that too thick. If you made it the same thickness as top and bottom, well, it wouldn't compress quite as easily, so this is a good way to do it. All right. Looking at the measurements, across the bottom, the full length of mine, 72.64 mil. The depth of the, the section that goes into the tool post mount, 14.43 millimetres. The length that goes into the tool post, you know, four way on mine, 36.75. And you take that from that and you'll get this section here. The, the uh, the depth of this thing, 21.75 mil, and the hole diameter, 15.45 mil. Okay, I mean basically, you get as snug a fit as you can get, um, and you drill the hole first, and then you slit your your mount after. All right, so that way, yeah, it will compress down. You can make that slit as thick as you want. I've only just done a hacksaw blade width. You could put two hacksaw blades in your 
hacksaw and get a double cut, you know, and make it twice as thick, but one does the job uh, for me anyway. So that's all there is to it. It's a very, very simple thing. So now I'll go over to the, uh, the lathe and I'll show you how you make, how, how you actually get your hole centred and the basics of it. Right, well here we are at the, at the lathe and here's the, the mount. So you've cut your, your mount to the shape and size that you want to fit your particular lathe. So it goes in a tool holder like that. You notice I'm only using two screws to hold it. That's plenty because once again, as I said, you're only putting very light pressure on this tool. You can't put a lot of pressure on it. You don't need anything massive. Uh, and it's holding it basically where your fingers would hold it, okay? That's the strongest part of the unit. So I'll go over that a little bit later. So okay, you put your, 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 uh, your shaped up piece of steel in, you tighten down the, the screws. You then get a, a drill and you put a drill in your chuck. Now remember, the grinding tool has to be on centre line. So basically what you're going to do is put a drill in your, in your uh, chuck you're going to square up the, the tool post mount and then you're going to wind it in to your drill and then you're going to start at the lathe and you're going to feed into the drill and that will give you dead, dead centre on your mount. Piece of code, easy as that. Now, once you've done that, then you have to fit your four jaw chuck. You put the the uh, mounting block in your four jaw, you center it, and then you get a boring bar in your tool post, and you bore it out to the dimension of the to the diameter of the little pencil grinder. You're almost done. The only thing to do after that is to drill down through here for a thread for your for your bolt. As I said, six mil in this case. You drill the top section so that uh, the, the little bolt will feed through without any thread. You don't, you don't thread that, so that's just a, a slide through fit, and your threading section is in the bottom section only. So, I mean, if you drill right through, you can tap it in from the bottom, or you can tap down from the top, doesn't really matter. Once you've done that, then you just slip your, uh, your end section. Job done, you're good to go. It's as easy as that. These are a piece of cake to make. Well, seriously, this is a absolute breeze. Okay, so I'll wrap up, go back to the bench and we'll wrap up and I'll just uh, explain a couple of things. Okay, here's the finished article. It goes in the mount like that and your grinder slips in and is held like that. Just clamp down on it. Now that's where you would hold it with your fingers. That's also the strongest part of the whole thing. Remember this is a tube, you know, you don't need anything more than this. Um, clamping down there is the strongest section because this uh, threads in or feed is fed in through into this aluminium cylinder. So you can clamp on that as hard as you like and you won't do any damage. I wouldn't go clamping it in the middle. Um, and of course you want it as close to the end as possible so you you don't have any, you know, any sort of great degree of uh, run out in your mount. On these, a couple of things you need to be aware of. One is that this little screw down the end, which holds the whole thing together, holds the valve, air valve, um, similar, uh, in, you know, keeps it all in, in place. This threads in and then that lock nut uh, screws down on it. When you use it by hand, that's not a problem because your fingers absorb any vibration. But when you rigidly mount it, uh, there will be a certain amount of vibration from, say, you know, grinding stones or anything that's got a bit of run out in it. Um, and that can actually work loose at this end. So I loctited that together. I could have even done that in. I can't remember. It was so long ago. I've never had that end come apart, but I think at the time that I... Uh, Lock tight of this, I might have locked tight of everything that I could, <laughs> and I've never ha ever had a problem since. And uh, I also put a little spring clip on the air hose so it doesn't come off. And that's about it. I mean, these are, as I said, these are a great unit. I mean, 
they're not perfect. Uh, and if you can look at my uh, blog on these, it gives you some hints on how to make them a bit more accurate and, uh, you know, just a few things. Also, when you use them, you only need to oil them about once an hour. You just put a couple of drops of oil in the, in the end and just the air will just blow it through. Because, you know, working on the lathe, you, you can't be working away from a lathe oiler, uh, from an airline oiler generally. I mean, I've got a separate uh, airline here which goes to my oiler, that's the black hose, whereas the air duster is the blue hose. Uh, so, you know, on the bench it just gets uh, air with oil in it, but when you're using it off of a, a long lead from the compressor, obviously you don't want to have oil going through that, so you just oil it at the tool. Once an hour, two drops of oil, I just use air tool oil or even ATF if you haven't got anything else, and uh, you're good to go. So anyway, that's it. I hope you found it interesting, and uh, you know, uh, it's an aspect I hadn't thought about as far as the plan, because as I said, when you make this, you have to make it for the individual lathe, because they're all going to be different uh, size tool holders, different types of tool holders, different centre lines. Easy to make, very easy. Okay, that's it from me. See you next time. Cheers.